everyone. So recently I came across a blog which had quite a few intervals that were interesting to say the least. I leave a link to it in the description if I remember to do so. And one of the intervals in this blog was this. Namely the interval on negative infinity to, uh, of sine of cosh x times cosine of sinh x with respect to x. And this is going to be the integral that we are going to evaluate today. So without further ado, let's get started because this is going to be quite an arduous ride. So at first we'll call this integral i. And then what we'll do is we'll define ourselves a new function i of t as the integral from negative infinity to infinity of sine of t cos x times cosine of t sin x. Hopefully I have the space to write everything. Okay, I barely have the space to write everything, as happens quite often with integrals on my board. And other things as well. And I believe you know how this is going. We are going to differentiate this with respect to t. So i prime of t will be, okay, so since we have a product of two functions, both with respect to t, we'll use the product rule. And this will give us a sum of two separate functions, which means we can split this sum as two different integrals. So this is what we will do. So let me draw this integral sign better. So i prime of t will be, okay, so we'll first differentiate our first function. So we'll have cosine of t sinh x times, okay, derivative of this, we get cosine of t cos x, use the chain rule, and then times cos x dx. And then plus integral from negative infinity to infinity of, and then we'll differentiate this function. So we'll have sine of t cosh x times, okay, so derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we'll have a negative sine in the front instead of a positive sine. And we'll have sine of t sinh x times sinh x. Yes, and now we'll give those two integrals their own name because, yeah. So we'll call this first integral i1. Yeah, this will be i1, and this second integral will be i2. Okay, so we will focus on i1. So let me, uh, so yeah, our i1 will be equal to. And now, what we will do is we'll use integration by parts. So what we will do is we will differentiate cosine of t cosh x, of t cosh x, and we'll integrate cosine of t sinh x, times cosh x. So here, if we differentiate this, we get negative the sine of t sinh x times t sinh x. Derivative of cosh x is sinh x. And then, if we integrate this, you will get, if we get, if we do a use substitution, let u equal t sinh x, we'll get as derivative t cosh x. So we'll have a factor of t in the front and we'll be left with 1 over t times the sine of t, wait, hold on, t sinh x. Wait, sorry, here it's t cosh x. I just realized, yeah, this is t cosh x instead of t sinh x. So our i1 will be 1 over t times sine of t sinh x times cosine of t cosh x 
evaluated a negative infinity and infinities, if those are our bounds, and then, okay, so negative signs cancel out, uh, cancel there, and then we'll have t divided by t, which is simply 1, so we'll have plus integral from negative infinity to infinity of, and then we'll have sine of t cos x times sine of t sin x times sin x dx but then here's what's nice this interval is the same as our i2 so this right here is i2 and now if we add i1 to i2 well if we well, if we subtract i2 from i1, we will get our original i prime of t. But then, if we subtract i2 from this, i2 minus i2 will cancel out. So, this, let me do this in blue, this will cancel out with this, leaving us in the process with, hold on, i prime of t, is simply 1 over t sine of t sinh x times cosine of is that right of t cos x evaluated at negative infinity to infinity and now i'll clean up this board and we will move on evaluating this thing right here yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll find our i prime of t. Okay, so now that I've cleaned up this board, we can finally continue. Okay, so first of all, I would like to rewrite this sine of t sin x times cosine of t cos x a tiny little bit by using some trigonometric identities. So we know by one of the product to some trigonometric identities, all right, this is one of the identities that you never use until you use them, okay? So we know that sine of alpha cosine of beta is equal to sine alpha plus beta plus sine alpha minus beta all over 2. And I believe that's correct. That's correct, yes. I think that's correct. And now we can use this to rewrite, uh, this identity to rewrite what we have here. So we have... 1 over t times the sine of, okay, so I'll factor out the t, of t times sin x plus cos x. And how many parentheses do I have? Oh, yeah. One more. Times cos, times, uh, well, one, half, uh, 1 over t, I need to factor out the 1 over t, so it's 1 over t plus well, it's 1 over 2t because we have a 1 half, and then sine of t times sin x minus cos x. Evaluated at negative infinity and infinity. And now, what is sin x plus cos x? Well, let me do this in green. And I'll draw a little box around here so nobody is confused. Sinh x plus cosh x. What is it? Well, I would like to make use of the exponential definitions of sinh and cosh. So we get e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 plus e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. And then since these are both the same denominator, we can just add the numerators. e to the negative x cancels out. And we're left with 2e to the x over 2, which is simply e to the x. Good. But then what about sin x time, uh, minus cos x? So we can proceed similarly. Sin x minus cos x is equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 minus e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. And now we can subtract the numerators e to the x cancels out, and we're left with negative e to the negative x minus e to the negative x over 2, which leaves us with negative e to the negative x. Okay, let's 
complete the box, haha, <laughs> complete the box, complete the square. Okay, that wasn't funny. And now, what, what are we left with? Well, we get 1 over 2t times, yeah, times sine of t e to the x. And then if you plug this in, we get sine of negative t to the negative x. And since sine is an odd function, we can factor out the negative. So we get negative sine of t e to the negative x, all evaluated at negative infinity and infinity. And now, what I will do is I will rewrite it as 1 over 2t times the limit as a goes to infinity of well, our quantity, sine of t e to the x minus sine of t e to the negative x, evaluated at negative a and a. So yeah, this is this basically equivalent to what we had right there. And then we will just plug in a whenever we can. So. We get the limit as a goes to infinity of, okay, plugging a into here, we get sine of t e to the a minus sine of t e to the negative a, and then minus, yeah, sine of t e to the negative a minus sine of t e to the negative negative a, which is t e to the a. And now, as a goes to infinity, e to the negative a goes to zero, sine of zero is zero, so this will go to zero as well as this. And then for this, we have sine of t to the a minus negative sine of t to the a, so we get two sine of t to the a, which cancels out with the two we have in the front. So we get one over two t times Wait, let me write this a bit lower. 1 over 2t times, well, not 1 over 2t, 1 over t. So 1 over t times the limit as a goes to infinity, I mean, a really awesome position right now, of sine of t to the a. Okay, now I can finally send back up. But then, we have a problem. As a goes to infinity, e to the a goes to infinity, so the inside goes to infinity. But sine oscillates between negative 1 and 1. So the limit as some x goes to infinity of sine of x doesn't exist, which means i prime of t doesn't exist, right? So we have it seems we have a problem there. No problem. Just go on as we need just just well write our well, well, just do all the steps like write our original i as a definite integral using our i prime of t. And that is exactly what I will do after I clean up this board. Okay, so where are we? Oh yeah, we had our i prime of t and our limit that it exists, which we, are, we will not care about. So, our i will simply be the integral at i prime of t. It will be a definite integral, but we don't know what our bounds will be. Because we can make use of the fundamental theorem of calculus to write this as a difference of values of i of t. So i of something minus i of something. And now, if we plug in t equals 1, we just get our original integral i that we have right there. So one of our bounds will be equal to 1. And then if we plug in t equals 0, here, the inside will go to 0, sine of 0 is 0, 0 times anything is 0, definite integral of 0 of, uh, of over 0 is 0, so we get, uh, so, well, at, at t equals 0, the integral vanishes, and this is good because i of 0 will go to 0, and we'll only be left with our i of 1, which is our original integral, so our lower bound will be 0. So overall, we have the integral from 0 to 1, of this thing right here, namely the 1 over t times the limit as a goes to infinity of sine of t e to the a dt. And now, what we want to do is we want to bring this limit 
outside of the integral under the condition that we can do so without angering the gods of mathematics. So we will get the limit as a goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over t sine of t e to the a dt. And now we'll introduce a substitution and we will let u be t times e to the a, which means if we solve for 1 over t, we get that 1 over t is equal to e to the a over u. And if we solve for a dt, we get that dt is equal to du over e to the a. So we, we can plug everything in. So we have the limit as a goes to infinity of, okay, if we plug in t equals 0, we get 0 because 0 times anything is 0. If we plug in t equals 1, we get 1 times e to the a, which is just e to the a. 1 over t is e to the a over u. And then we have sine of u times du over e to the a. e to the a cancels with e to the a. And as a goes to infinity, e to the a goes to infinity. So our upper bound will go to infinity. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of sine u over u. That's familiar. It's it's very famous integral. I don't know if it has a name or something. But yeah, it's a very famous integral and it can be evaluated using the differentiation under the integral sign, what we did just there. But we but I won't go through this all over again because it first it had been done numerous times and second this video would be way too long. And you know me, I'm great at making really long videos. So we can just skip to the answer and say that this is equal to pi over 2. Pi over 2. Who knew that this nested combination of, of trigonometric and hyperbolic functions would give us pi over 2? That is really amazing, in my opinion. So yeah, this is a really nice watching. Remember to really like, share, subscribe to this video. Bye.